Straight Shift. With the Car Chick, the podcast that's all about cars, buying, selling, fixing, and driving. And sometimes pretty fast to hear the Car Chick. Now, here she is. Welcome, everyone, to the Straight Shift. I wanted to do something fun today. I have already know from my blog that I have redesigned my office this summer and I had a wonderful interior designer help me out and keep me on track with that. And it got me thinking again about the colors that we choose for cars and what do those colors mean? There's, there's a psychology behind color and when you pick a color for a car, it means something. And I did a video on this a couple of years ago, but I really wanted to kind of look at, is there a science behind this? And lo and behold, there is. And so I have invited my interior designer, Stacy from Anderson Cohen Designs. And she is here in studio with me because as a designer, Stacy, you know a lot about color. You helped me pick the color for my office walls. Let me tell you, you and Laura freaking nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We're glad you liked it. <laughs> I love it. In case anybody's wondering, it's called City Loft and it is a very, very, very almost white, but pale, warm gray. Can I tell a little story about that color? Yeah, please. About just how we picked it out and you said, I probably won't be able to get to it till <laughs> next week. And by the time we left your house and we're home, we got an email saying, I've already picked it up. And actually, I think I saw on Facebook that you had already had one wall painted. So um, you were very oh. ready to go, <laughs> client. I, I, I think the term you're looking for is OCD. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, tend to get a little motivated when I am in the middle of a project. So. You were the most organized client we've ever had. <laughs> Spreadsheets know, galore, floor plans, my, measurements. My, my, my builder years ago when I built um, a custom home with my now ex-husband, our builder said the same thing because between him being an engineer, me having, I have like this little certificate degree in interior design, which means I just know enough to be dangerous <laughs> between that and both of us being project managers. Yeah. We like showed up with our laptop and a project plan and he said the exact same thing. So made our job very easy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I still appreciate the help because little did I know that there are 4,000 shades of gray. Yeah, I know. Right. It's crazy. And you know, in one of the things I ask my clients on the questionnaire when we're going through the perfect car process to help them pick the right car is, you know, what are the colors that you like and what would your be your, you know, first, second, third choice of colors and car colors. There's a lot of different colors of cars. And, you know, sometimes like with the, the Highline cars, like your Audi and your Mercedes, Audi has like four different shades of silver. It's crazy. So you know, color I know in your world and design is way more complicated because there literally are what tens of thousands. Yes. Yeah. I mean, colors. I think there's an infinite number. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, it was a very overwhelming thing to me. And so, you know, you guys, I mean, literally you just like nailed it, you know, narrowed it down so fast and we're like, okay, it's going to be one of these three. Boom. I went out and bought samples of each, stuck them on the wall. I'm like, yep, I like that one best. <laughs> then I had a painted. <laughs> want to talk today a little bit about what what is the psychology behind each of at least the major color groups from your standpoint from what you've learned in the psychology of color and interior design and, and we'll just see if we can apply that to what it means when you pick that color for your car right okay well let's start you know the basics in cars probably you know throughout history the basic most popular colors have been your your black white silver Mm -hmm. You know, when Henry Ford brought out the Model A, you know, back at the turn of the century, he said, you can get it in any color you want, as long as it's black. <laughs> <laughs> and I think at the time that was part of it was, you know, kind of the sophistication of the black, you know, not everybody could afford one. And I have a feeling it was also like the only color that they could produce reliably back at the turn of the century. But now, you know, do people use black in interior design? They do. And actually, um, Benjamin Moore just came out with their color of the year and Pantone, which is the color god, if you will. Like they announced their color in December. Pantone is the, is the god of color. <laughs> yes. Um, that's, <laughs> but they have, they announced it in December, but they've let out the palettes and they're really 
promoting two of them. One's Cravings and one is Classico. And Classico is black. Like it's got the blacks and the dark grays and the dark, dark teals. Oh, wow. So um, you'd look for that coming up in 2019. I think you'll see a lot of that in interiors as well. Where would you use a black in interior design? I can see it like on furniture and things like that, but this is, we're talking about a paint color, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, and then wall? they considered that in cabinets. Oh. Um, and then again, like you said, that there's so many shades of gray, there are so many shades of black. And so people My will, paint. will <laughs> Yeah. <that. laughs> People will use black on the walls, you know, sometimes it's to highlight a space or if it's large to make it smaller, or even if a small room, sometimes you want to make it feel cozy. Wow. Well, black, you know, in cars, obviously, you know, your, your highline cars, it just, it means sophisticated. It's kind of the, the power color. Just like exactly. The, the power suit. Um, one of my clients a couple of years ago, she is an attorney her name is Brandy, so I'm just going to give a shout out to, you know, Malazzo Web Law Firm. They're great. Brandy Malazzo is awesome. And she was looking for a new car, you know, a grown-up car finally. And, of course, all of her male lawyer friends were telling her, oh, well, you have to get a black BMW. You're a lawyer, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, you know, Brandy left her big law firm and started her own firm with some other female partners because she wanted to be different. And we were looking at a Mercedes for her. And she had gone in. This was around the holidays. And she went into the dealership and they had a red one right in the showroom. And she had always wanted a red car. And she came back to me and she's like, oh, they had a red one. It was so beautiful, but I can't get a red car. You know, I'm an attorney. I have to have a black car. And I said, <laughs> Brandy, you have worked your butt off and you have stepped out of, you know, this male dominated traditional law firm to start your own. You're a badass. You can have whatever freaking color car you want. Get the red car. And my husband, I had told him this and you know, the commercials that come out around the holidays with Santa Claus yeah. and the white Mercedes are going out to be right, nice, right. nice and the red ones on the naughty list. I told my husband the story and he, he looked at me and says, Oh, she must be on the naughty list. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's not what came to mind for me. So, you know, what came to mind for you? We're talking about a red car. Um, red is the symbol of power. Um, Hell yeah. so yeah, I mean, it's, um, action passionate um think about you know like even your heart blood's red um, well, yeah. <laughs> so it's <laughs> i mean valentine passion red um target coca-cola like it's just the take action color so oh. i think it would be great for an attorney to have a red mercedes <laughs> oh i'm gonna make sure brandy knows you said that but well, that explains why red is such a popular color for sports cars right and why you know, there's, there's kind of a myth out there that red cars get targeted more by the police for getting I've, pulled over. I've always thought that. Well, <laughs> I, ha I have a theory about that. And for me, it's, I don't think the police target red cars and just pull them over randomly more than they pull over any other color car. I think it's that people who choose to drive a red car tend to have driving behaviors that are more likely to get their butts pulled over. And that is probably more accurate. <laughs> what, what color do you think my Porsche was when I had it? <laughs> and my Mustang, two Mustang convertibles that I've owned. So yeah, like every sports car pretty much that I've owned has been red. And yes, I got pulled over a lot. <laughs> and look at you. Like, I mean, you exude red. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why, you know, hot pink is my, my power color right. in my brand. And, you know, obviously, you know, you've seen my car, you know, that Maggie has the hot pink. All Gotta over love. Her. Yes. <laughs> but I did temper it with the dark gray. Right. So. But pink is just a, um, it's like a small lower tone of red. Right. Exactly. So and hot I pink mean, is like barely a lower tone. Exactly. <laughs> so. <laughs> So you're staying true to who you are. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I have found that my, my taste in colors has gotten, you know, a little more, I hope I'm going to use the word sophisticated, hoping that that's really true. I'd like to think it's more sophisticated as I've gotten older. You know, I, I, I bought that Porsche for my 30th birthday. Right. You know, when I have my, what I call my first midlife crisis. <laughs> And, you know, I love the brighter colors and stuff back then. And, you know, now I find myself going towards the, 
the more sophisticated colors, you know, the muted grays. You know, for me, dark gray, if I had to pick a color that I think looks good on probably 95% of the cars out there, it's dark gray. And that's right. the base for Maggie's wrap. It's the dark gray with the hot pink, which is my branding colors. Right. And, um, you know, whereas before it's like, if you ask me what color car I want, I mean, red would have been just, I would have got red. I told you I'm, I'm going to have a red car. No matter what it is, it's going right. to be a red car. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I've grown out of that a little bit as I've gotten older, but I also think that dark gray, because it's not black. I mean, anybody can pick black, right? you know, and look in my closet. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Why. It makes you look thinner, but I like to me, the dark gray says kind of badass. you know? <laughs> <laughs> See, well in, and interiors gray is more in the neutral family. Right. So calm, you know, like, I, sophisticated, yes, for sure. Yeah, a deep, dark. Maybe I'm just getting it from like the color of you know aircraft carriers and battleships or something. I it's see like, where you're going you know, with especially this, especially with the the metallics in it. And that's that's the fun thing about car paints right now is that they have gotten the technology has gotten so amazing that there's depth. There's these metallic flecks that catch the sunlight and almost make them look different colors and different lights. It's not just the boring flat paints that we had even just in the 90s and the early 2000s right some really pretty colors and I, I love it when they have that magnetic fleck under there but to what you were saying earlier about things kind of going to we were talking probably before we turned the microphones on <laughs> we were talking about how things are going moving to, back towards white right and white is still white and silver they're really close running but white is still the number one color for cars. Right. And I, I don't know when that started in interiors, but I'm blaming Apple for that <laughs> because they have made white such they, a palette. Yeah, they really have. Um, so I know that in 2016, um, Sherwin Williams color was white. You were asking when, or you were saying, you know, when is the switch? Because everybody thinks right now gray is hot and it still is. Um, but like I had mentioned before about Benjamin Moore, their color is metropolitan, which is like a white um, with a gray undertone. Okay. Um, that's their color for 2019. But you're going to see on in interiors, the shift is going from away from the grays and into the whites on the walls. Interesting, because you know, I used it's so funny because I used to hate white. And I'm like, ah, how boring. That's not a color. Right. You know? <laughs> but now I'm realizing, you know, one of the reasons I did my office, you know, in the basically the whole, the almost white and with all the white furniture is that it's just it's it's clean it it feels like when i'm in there it just opens up the energy to creativity and that's and, what white does yeah. that's exactly <laughs> i mean the, the, uh, white for an office is um is perfect and, and that's you know when you're talking about the psychology of color for for cars too you know white White kind of means you, when you have a white car, it means you have good taste. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, you're boring and you just bought whatever was on the lot because they had a bunch of white ones. Right. Now, that could be the case. Not that everyone be. not everyone drives the color car they would ultimately like to drive. Sometimes they drive it because it was on the lot and they got a good deal on it. But, you know, white does say that you kind of strive for perfection mm -hmm. with that clean. You know, keeping your car, white car clean is not easy. Exactly. <laughs> Which is why I went with black. <laughs> that and the sophistication if i had to drive a minivan with four kids i was like well at least i'm getting black <laughs> you know i call that the darth vader minivan <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm ready for her to go <laughs> those days are done i swore i would never have one but i did <laughs> well, there we go well the next time we need a new car for you we'll figure out what your favorite color is yes and you will hook me up <laughs> but those those neutral colors the the black the white the silver the dark gray those are always probably going to be your top color and those colors are always going to be in in style in cars right so from you know a resale standpoint if you're buying a car in one of those colors it's a safe choice because you're not going to have to worry about that color you know going out of style and then it affecting your resale value when you go to sell that car right a few years down the line i think that's you know why they picked it up and that's why the majority of your your highline cars your bmws and your mercedes and your audis come in those colors with maybe like one flashier color and that's it it's like you know two right. different shades of black four different shades of silver two different shades of gray and like two different shades of white <laughs> right i mean and even in interiors when you said for resale value so 
Oh, in your house too, like wall colors. Right. So we do it, staging um, for Help people. people sell their houses faster. Yes. <laughs> And that's exactly when we're doing a redesign project, um, we can get crazy with the color. But when we're in there for staging, we stick with the neutrals, the, you know, grays that we don't do black, but <laughs> not for staging. Again, that's, no, that's a personal a taste. That's a little bold in an interior design choice. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but the whites, the, the, the neutral grays, the browns, um, for staging for the same reason for the resale. Um, and then you add your color in your accessories, like your linens, your bed linens, your pillows, the things that are going to go with you. But the foundation of the house should be pretty neutral. And that makes sense. You know, we have an interior design. We have a lot more options for adding color in. Whereas on a car, you pretty much have the exterior and the interior. <laughs> but you can, especially in the luxury cars, right? You've got your leather. Your, I mean, you could get crazy with your interiors. <laughs> and then, usually the craziest they tend to get is with a red, red interior. Cheese. Yeah, which can look really beautiful with a black car or a white car mm -hmm. with then some black trim on it. Um, I like doing the black wheels, or, you know, dark wheels. Because that kind of grounds the car and it gives the right. you know, a white car with black rims and you know maybe a red interior. That's really that's a statement right there. That is a statement, which is funny because that you can get a Camry in that color, and who ever <laughs> thought they'd make a statement in a Camry? <laughs> you know, the world's best rental car. But you know, you doesn't tend to get too too crazy. One of the things I've seen though in the last few years with car colors is they have been mixing like a silver or a gray exterior with like a, a basketball or football brown interior. I mean, what, what is that? Does that mean anything color wise? I don't know about that per se. <laughs> You're looking at me like that's weird. But, like I feel it's weird. Well, no. Can I go back to color of the year though? Because the Sherwin Williams announced theirs and it's cavern clay, which is like a orangey. It reminds me of a desert, you know, as techy feel, oh, sure. kind of an adobe ish color. Yeah. Or something you would so see it's like a dark orange, but they chose that to go with oh, you said grays. Yeah. What but I mean, if you think about it in, in the earth, you know, like that's true. I hadn't really thought about the earth mixing those colors. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, I guess mother earth has the right to mix right. the colors. She yeah, right. Chooses, but... I mean, gray is a neutral and Brown is a neutral, so not in your horizon. I, I, I think I have to do that because I, I get very stuck in my ways of, you know, if it's a silver car, it needs to be a gray or black interior. But right. they, they said that one of the reasons they did that is that it's a very masculine mm -hmm. color combination. I'm like, oh, yeah, of course, the guys are going to love it. You know, you put Absolutely. a nice neutral, safe out exterior that's kind of futuristic, and then you put something in there that reminds them of football or basketball. They're happy. Yeah. <laughs> Has your husband never worn, like, a gray suit with brown shoes? Okay, my husband is a mechanic, so no, he does not okay. wear suits unless it's just like I, we're going to a wedding or a funeral, and even then he tries to get out of it. So. Well, <laughs> just pretend you're in Nordstrom and you look at the mannequin, and if he's wearing a gray suit, he might have some brown shoes. It'll be okay. All right, I'm going to stop picking on all the you know the BMWs that have the silver exterior and the, the brown interior. Okay, you've, you've changed my mind. <laughs> we're going to take a really quick break, and when we come back, we're going to talk about some of the brighter colors. What What is blue and green and, heck, even yellow? What does that mean about your personality if you pick that for your car? We'll be right back. Do you hate car shopping? Do you worry about being taken advantage of or about finding the right car at a fair price? Buying a car can be a frustrating and time-consuming experience. But what if you could get a great deal without having to do a ton of research, without having to haggle, and without the fear of buying a lemon? You can. As your personal car shopper, the Car Chick will help you pick the perfect car based on your unique lifestyle, budget, and personality. She'll handle all of the legwork and negotiating for you. All you have to do is sign the papers and take the keys. It's that easy. To learn how the Car Chick can save you time, money, and hassle on your next car purchase, give us a call at 888-575-2138. That's 888-575-2138 or visit us on the web at thecarchick.com. Ah, the Car Chick is back for more Straight Shift. And we're back with the Straight Shift. I am talking with my friend and business sorority sister and my personal interior decorator, Stacy Cohen of Anderson Cohen Designs. And we're talking about 
what does the color of your car say about your personality based on the psychology behind color? And we've talked about the neutral colors, your whites, your blacks, your silvers, the colors that are most popular for cars, always have been, always will be. Very safe choices to preserve your resale value, but some people like to make a little bit more of a bolder statement with your car. They think those colors are boring, right. and I totally respect that, and there are some really bright, fun other colors out there, especially for cars, and you know, one of the ones that I happen to really love, um, I like, my mom's favorite color is blue. It's always been blue. And, and that's it, the most popular favorite color. Is it really? For interiors, yes. Oh, I wonder if, I'll have to do some research and see just asking people in general what their favorite color is if the most popular response is blue. Yeah. Prob it probably is. Right. Well, if you think about it, you know, blue blue takes us to the ocean, to water, and, and that's a very, well, at least for some of us, that's like my happy place other, other, right. than, other than the racetrack, which is yeah. a really happy place. <laughs> <laughs> but when I'm not racing, my other happy place is the beach because the or being on a cruise ship where I'm surrounded, I'm out on the ocean, I'm surrounded by water. It's so calming. Right. It's so serene. And so what, what does the psychology behind blue, what's up with that? Cause we, calming. <laughs> so I was right. Calming, um, trustworthy, honest, loyal. That's why, you know, police officers, which actually they're black now, but when, I mean, back in the day they were blue. Right, blue yeah. Um, and, um, it supposedly slows your metabolism. So you'll see like, Oh, I don't know that I want in, that <laughs> <laughs> in kitchens and whatnot. But, um, yeah, the very serene and calming and that's why you'll see them in bathrooms and spas and all of that. Doctor's offices sometimes. Right. If they're not boring. And being it's supposed tan. to calm the, um, the red that they see when they're operating. Oh, to kind of counteract. So they don't, mm -hmm. you know, so they don't yeah. get nauseous looking right. at your blood. <laughs> we well, you know there, there's so many different shades of blue too. And then in cars, there, you know, you can have your, your dark navies, which are almost black. The, the challenge that I find with the dark blue cars is while they're a very popular choice for new cars, mm -hmm. they tend to show more flaws once the car gets used and you, you get the nicks and the chips and the scratches and stuff because even more like, but even more than black, more than black. And I think it's, and this is just my theory. I have no science behind it to prove this, but this is just, you know, car chick opinion. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's because, you know, the black. It at least absorbs a lot of the, the light, mm -hmm. whereas the blue, I think the dark blue reflects just enough of it so that you can see those blemishes easier than you can on the black. Gotcha. For some reason, dark blue is one of the most popular colors when you buy a new car, but it's one of the least popular to buy used. So it has a higher depreciation oh. for resale value than a black one. And that's good to know too. It is. But so. there's, you know, dark, there's navy blue cars. There's, you know, really... For a while, there's some like a real pale sky blue, and there that's still out there in the right. industry. Um, but right now, what I'm seeing, and I tell you, I love these. There is just this what I call flaming <laughs> electric metallic blue. Ford has it, Toyota has it, and they put it on like their Tacoma pickup truck. And it's like, oh wow, because of all the metallic flecks in it, it is so deep and so rich and has so many layers to it. It's like every time I see one, I absolutely fall in love with it. I don't know that I would buy one personally, but if it pulls up to me next to a stoplight, it makes me very happy to look at. You know, that whole, like, I have not seen that on the road, oh, but you know, on. that whole, the brain and the RAS at the reticular activating system. I have a feeling I'm going to leave here and see a bunch of electric blue cars because like <laughs> I have not, I've not run into that lately since I was in college. My friend Anne had this blue, blue Toyota Tercel, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, and it was the like the only one on the lot, I think, when her parents got it for her. And we like laughed at that color. But I mean, it's it, back apparently. It, it's back. And it's also so much prettier because of what I was saying before, the metallic metallics and the technology mm -hmm. is crazy what they can do with it. Um, but yeah, so if you like bright blue cars, there are some blues out there that are just incredibly beautiful. And one color that kind of the shade of it changes a lot throughout, you know, the, the years of what's popular and what's not is green. Yes. I had a green, <laughs> this is embarrassing. <laughs> My first minivan <laughs> was a green Ford Windstar. Ooh, so that was bad for so many reasons. <laughs> <laughs> it was that it was that dark hunter green, right? 
Yeah, like with an olive undertone, which all mm. of this green is coming back. Oh, yeah. It's part of the Classico line that I was talking about with, at Benmore. Um, they have like a hunter green, which reminds me so much of like late 80s, 90s. But it's funny. It's like when everything comes, when things come back, they come back a little bit different. And it's like you're so. falling in love with it all over again. Like if the 70s and 80s would kind of come back, I really want them to be different this time. <laughs> Those were not some of our better fashion choices. I still love me a flared bell bottom jean. <laughs> I'm sorry. In Hunter Green. <laughs> in, not in Hunter Green. <laughs> well, I remember back in the decorating days because that was, you know, the early 90s is when I graduated from college and I was getting my first house and all my friends were and we were doing that they had all the jewel tones with the burgundies and the hunter greens and we were all putting that in our dining room right and right and I had a hunter green 90 I think it was a 96 or 97 Dodge Ram truck it was very popular in kind of the mid to late 90s and even into the early 2000s in cars but mm-hmm. you know now if you the resale value for those is just terrible you know granted there are older cars now too so they're not necessarily in good shape, but like that shade of green is totally gone in cars. No more dark green, no more teal. That's gone. And now you're seeing more of the kind of the earthy greens, your, mm-hmm. your khakis. Um, in the cars? And it depends on the car too, because Subaru is one of the ones that still, Subaru and Jeep are the two that still have a lot of those greens. And if you think about it, those are the two brands that their whole brand is about outdoors. Getting outdoors. Yeah. No, it's a hunter green is really making a call. See now this soft fern, we're looking at Stacy's computer here and that soft fern, which is a really, really pale, almost grayish green. It's really, you can barely tell like, is that like beige? Is it green? Is it gray? You're not sure. Yeah, it's got the green undertone. Yeah. Now that's a color that you're seeing kind of in your, in your Subarus, your brands of cars that are outdoorsy kind of cars, but you right. don't see it across the spectrum with all of your manufacturers. Right. But yeah, the green is coming back. And I will say, you said, you know, the resale for those green cars are going down. And I can promise you like the resale of your house, if you still have got the hunter green in there, um, <laughs> even though these colors are coming back, I think they're coming back again, different. Um, that would affect that also. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm loving these new greens. <laughs> so, somewhat, you know, and I like them in a lot of the cars, you know, again, I, cause I see so many cars all the time and do this. I have a luxury of liking certain colors, but when it comes to my personal choice of what I would choose, a lot of times that varies by which car or the type of car that I would choose. And sometimes, you know, it depends on the exact shade of that color and that paint for the manufacturer. Right. Like we were talking about the neutrals before silver, you know, silver and white, the most popular car colors. You know, I hate, I think silver tends to be kind of boring. That's just not my personality for a a car choice, but Lexus has a silver and I can't remember what they call it, but it is so rich. It looks literally like liquid platinum. Oh, wow. It is it's ridiculous. I mean, it's like somebody took a chunk of platinum and melted it down. It looks molten on the car. I'll have to ask my neighbor. She works for Lexus. Nice. Um, <laughs> and her cars are always clean. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's just, it's fun with that. And so, yeah, you know, with the, with the greens too, I mean, I think if you're, you're picking a green nowadays as a color for a car, not the hunter green from before. Right. It's, you know, it means that you like the, the outdoors. You're kind of a, a woodsy outdoory kind of person the only one i don't really understand is on the the little kia souls you know the little square box cars that look is that the, the one hamsters. with the like yes the that's exactly hamsters. what i was gonna say the chipmunks <laughs> yeah they're the hamsters chipmunks. They're, whatever they are they're dancing hamsters yeah they when the soul came out it came in a shade called alien green and it and it is it's it's alien green so it, that's like a lime it's not quite lime it has I'm, too much brown underneath it to be lime I'm picturing like Shrek to me. That would be like close, alien green. a little browner than that. Okay. <laughs> but really close to ogre green. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Which is kind of fun and it's different. And um, Mercedes had a color last year. They may still have it on one of their small SUVs, literally called kryptonite green. I give them kudos for naming it kryptonite green and it is, it's a metallic obnoxious, like literally like <laughs> metallic, incredible Hulk green glow in the dark yeah it's, you know and i'm like i was looking at that at the auto show and i was like okay that's a little interesting choice for a mercedes suv which you know you just think black and white and sophisticated right that's the like kryptonite green is what you would expect to see on 
you know, the muscle, the really nice muscle cars from the 60s and 70s. So I'm not sure what Mercedes is thinking with Kryptonite Green. On <laughs> right. There. And that's now? That was last year. Oh, wow. At the auto show. Yeah, I saw that. I was like, okay, that's a bold choice for a Mercedes. <laughs> oh, wow. But they say it just gets people into their showroom because everybody looks at it and does what I didn't go, what the heck is that? But <laughs> Do you think it might be Atomic, the color you were thinking about? Uh, For which one? The Lexus. It might be. Okay. It might, I can't remember. Unless it's something like Kryptonite Green or Alien Green. Right, you wouldn't remember. The exact shade might not stick in my head, especially if it's silver. But yeah, I mean, it's a really pretty color. But then, you know, for a few years there, and we're we're still seeing it a little bit in the automotive industry. It's starting to taper off. It's a color that I like to call metallic pumpkin. <laughs> okay. It, it's kind of a, a brownish orange. And I have seen that and around. It's metallic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So is that popular in terms of what, what does that really say about you? If you pick that color, other than you're not at all concerned about your resale value. <laughs> <laughs> See, that goes along with the Sherwin Williams color of the year, almost, you know, the cavern clay. Um, but in the late 90s, 2000s, we had those spice colors, which oh, were yeah. like, I actually had my laundry room that color like that. But it, like there was the no metallic. And, yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, but it wasn't metallic. But um, yeah, that's, I would say that color orange is happy. It's, um, it's another creative color. It's warm. Oh, okay. And, you know, that's, it's happy and it's a happy color. that's why i think it goes great with your brand you've got orange in there not metallic but yeah it's a more of a, a tangerine kind of color that right i actually kind of had picked that because the the hot pink and the tangerine the fuchsia and tangerine those were actually the colors for my wedding a few years ago oh, we wow. did a puerto rican wedding and those are oh some yeah of the tropical, tropical colors. right yeah, so <laughs> i kind of carry that into my brand because they were because i love it because you toned it down with adding in the secondary like the black and the gray so it works yeah so i use it in very small doses yeah no. i think orange is good in small doses not necessarily on a big suv but right <laughs> it has been popular and the same with interiors though like small doses small doses. go well <laughs> go very far with the orange well you know you said it was kind of a happy color i think when I think of happy colors, what comes to mind is yellow. Yeah. And you know, most people. Yeah. Yellow smiley face. Yellow smiley face. <laughs> the emojis. <laughs> right, right. So if you're driving a yellow car, you're essentially driving an emoji. You really are. <laughs> and that's been a popular color for sports cars because, I mean, how can you not be happy driving a sports car? Right. I haven't seen, you know, my father-in-law had a convertible yellow Mustang for a little oh, bit. Oh, yeah. Like, and this was like. I think I had three kids already. So, I mean, it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> so, you, so you weren't getting into that car anytime soon. Well, so. no, but I'm just saying, like, it wasn't that long ago. It's, you know, been within the last 10 years. Oh, so, wow. But I, I haven't seen any yellow cars. They're, they have, from a kind of generic car color standpoint, they were very popular kind of in the early to mid-2000s. Mm -hmm. Now you will still sometimes see them on, you know, like, a Corvette. Right. Um, yeah, I could see Mustang that. Mustang may still have it. I have a look at most of my clients are not those type of people. Right. Um, so I don't have a lot of clients that are saying I want a yellow car. Although mm -hmm. it is one of the colors that's on my, my intake form, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> just in case you want one. Um, but there were some, they had some for a while, some of the small cars Ford had a, a yellow. And so you could get a lot of just kind of your smaller sedans and it can be, it's a way to make what might otherwise be a boring little car into something a little bit more fun. Um, obviously the smart car came in yellow. And my opinion is if you're going to drive something that microscopic, it needs to be the brightest color possible. Right, right. So someone will see you and not squish you. Right. Exactly. <laughs> but that's exactly. why school buses are yellow. Yeah. Or just yellow. Yeah. That's why the lines on our roads are yellow are that same color because that is the single most visible color. You know, when you're you know out on the road and like it's foggy, it's rainy, school bus yellow that's why it's school bus yellow it's so it can be seen right and in interiors um exactly like a picture you know yellow in a sunroom or somewhere where just where you pick, picture happy in your kitchen um yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> it does it does make me happy i don't think i'm gonna decorate with a lot of yellow maybe some i have accent i have gold you know i have gold on my walls right the majority place downstairs the golden red i'm kind of still a little bit in that phase and it's everywhere so i'm not going to repaint everything yet right but, <laughs> <laughs> but i think it's smaller doses again like you know i liked the bright yellow cars and 
And when I was looking at sports cars and back in the day when I was still buying sports cars, I, I contemplated that yellow. I, I did. I looked at a yellow Honda S2000, which is a great little you know convertible roadster that they sadly don't make anymore. And I thought, you know, as much as I love this right now, I'm afraid that if it sat in my garage for four years, like after like a year and a half, I'd it, I'd be so over it. Right, right. So that's one of the problems with trendy colors. And that's why they're trendy because you do get right. over it in, you know, a car sitting in your garage and depending on how long you plan to keep it, if you're leasing it, you know, you're going to be turning it in. If it's a color you think you're going to like for three years, great. But if you're buying it to keep it, you know, and you do kind of outgrow that color trend in a year and a half, right. you're probably going to be stuck with it you know, unless you have the equity to, to flip it. So. And you can apply that to interiors also. That's why um, I personally in my house have gone from, I did have colors. I think what happened was people were, at least we're in our part of the country. We Down yeah, here in the South. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like all the new construction and everything. And then the builder white. So everybody was just like, so sick of seeing that. And everybody, I mean, there was one point where every room in my house was a different color. And now <laughs> I've gone back to, you know, the basic and bringing the color in and te like texture with my um, window treatments and bringing the color in through accessories and linens and those kind of things. The things that are relatively inexpensive and to easy replace to, to swap out I when swap you get bored out, with it. Yeah, I yeah. swap out a lot. Like I just had a friend cars. over. No, I had a friend <laughs> over and she was like, What what are you doing to your dining room? You just did that like three years ago. I was like, Three years ago? That's three years ago. <laughs> I'm already over it. Yes, exactly. Well, I had, you know, I had that red dining room, the deep red walls, and you know, I still loved it. But it was it was kind of dark, and you know when I turned that dining room into an office, I I wanted that open white right creativity, make that creative energy flow and right. And I I mean your office, I love it. I love my office. Too. I want to sit down and work out. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen my office, people go onto my blog at picardic.com. I do I'm putting more articles out there about it, but I have a couple of pictures. So, but now kind of finally, there are some wilder colors out there. Often people would custom you know, paint their cars the color they want. You know, you'll, you'll go around and you'll see, you know, an old, like a Hummer that's painted bright pink and, right. you know, has a bunch of girly stuff on it, which, you know. I and Jeeps, I feel like. Jeeps, you know, you can, you know, well, you know, Barbie had a, a pink Jeep, you know. Right, more right. power to her. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, sometimes you'll see, like, purple. The because metallic of, purple. A metallic purple. I yeah. have seen that. Um, and that's because, and this tends to be on the muscle cars because they brought back the, the muscle cars from, the you know 60s and 70s with the charger and the challenger and the hellcats and and they are designed just like when you said with colors when they kind of come back around in style they come back a little differently they've done the same thing with a lot of these muscle cars and i i, I love them you know if you're into muscle cars the muscle cars today have that very retro feel they really went back to the original design cues and the body lines of the 60s and 70s but with a modern twist and, and obviously with modern materials, but they've brought back some of those colors. And one of them happens to be a really bright, obnoxious purple. <laughs> and I kind of love it on those. <laughs> I think it's hilarious that you're saying purple with muscle cars because in interiors and even in staging, like they would say to stay away from the purple because not many men like purple. Um, and you want to keep everything, you know, just neutral, whatever. And here you're telling me they're making muscle cars purple, which well, I think is funny. And I would, I haven't seen the data to know the if demographics. It's, right. I because guess there's I a lot of women into muscle cars. That's true. <laughs> it's not me. That's why I just assume when you say muscle cars that, um, I, I wonder if it is the one, the people that are buying the the purple chargers and challengers, if, if those are the women who are in the muscle right. cars. I mean, I know my, you know, my business partner in the, the television show that I'm working on right now um, his wife has you know sh she's totally into the muscle cars too and she's got a mustang that she shows and while the car itself is silver she has done a lot of the accents on that car in purple purple's her color so right she's exactly the type of you know woman muscle car enthusiast that okay. would probably give her front seat in hell to have so that's like one. just shows my lack of knowledge of cars <laughs> honey you drive a black minivan you know <laughs> I know, shouldn't have said that to, to drive to drive any car that is right. a bolder color like that you know they right. had 
some of the smaller ones, like the little Chevy Spark came in almost a lavender. It looked like a dang Easter egg. I mean, seriously. <laughs> to, that says that you are confident. You have to be pretty confident in who you are and not giving, you know, a rat's ass <laughs> what other people think right. to drive a car that color. And I think that, you know, it shows a lot of, a lot of strength and a lot of confidence. Right. And you're not concerned with resale value because it's a very personal choice. Exactly. But a car is a personal choice. And I think that if you're buying a car purely for its resale value and and it's not something you're going to love. Like you're, you're buying the car for you. Exactly. You know, exactly. Buying, you're, you're better off just maintaining the car well and keeping it clean and just taking good care of it. Cause that affects your resale value more than anything. But if you want a purple car, go get a purple car for crying out loud. Exactly. You know? Cars <laughs> appreciate once you drive them up a lot anyway. Right. Exactly. So it might as well <laughs> so be a fun well, yeah. color that you love. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for being here with me today, Stacey. It's really interesting kind of testing my theories and just my humble opinions on colors, which have no scientific basis or training at all behind it. <laughs> and it, it seems like it's confirmed with you know, what you know about the psychology of color. It does. And how that applies to cars versus interiors versus, you know, what's in your wardrobe. So. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. No problem. And if anybody wants to see the video I did on this um, a few years ago, you can, it's on my blog at thecarchick.com and you can also go to my YouTube site at carchick-tv.com. And Stacy, if somebody wants to get some help fixing up their home <laughs> <laughs> and maybe get rid of that hunter green and that burgundy that's still left over from the 90s, how do they get a hold of you and your partner, Laura? Um, okay. So you can find us at www.andersoncohen.com dot com and you can email me at stacy at andersoncohen.com and I just wanted to clarify at the beginning that Leanne was referring to me as an interior designer. I do interior styling and redesign and home staging. So the difference is an interior designer is going to knock down walls. So if you need those kind of things, I can I have great people to refer you to. But you don't knock down walls. I don't knock down you walls. You just repaint them. I repaint them. <laughs> <laughs> and move stuff around and add things and get new fabrics and all that fun stuff. And clear out, you know, kind of a lot of the crap that you think looks good around your house. But when you're staging it for oh, resale, yeah, for other resale. people yeah. do not like your little tchotchkes all over the place. Right, right. <laughs> so, well, it's not necessarily that. It's just the more the eye stops in a room, the smaller it's going to appear. So, Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Y'all learned something totally new today. Well, folks, until next time, drive safely and whatever car color you pick, just do it safely. Bye, folks. The Straight Shift Podcast is copyright Leanne Shattuck, The Car Chick, 2017. All views expressed by guest and or co-hosts are those of the guest and or co-hosts and not necessarily those of Leanne Shattuck or The Car Chick. Mm -hmm.